Hello, welcome to another edition of Trial by Magis. Tonight I'm going to be taking a departure from my uh, usual fare to cover a common premium aircraft that is purchasable by anyone from the World of Warplanes gift store or in-game with gold. This is the Ilyushin IL-2 Sturmovic field modification aircraft. This is part of the first generation of IL-2 Sturmoviks that joined the Red Air Force. When the aircraft first was uh, sent to the front lines, it was a one-man aircraft. It had no defensive armament whatsoever. Uh, within weeks of becoming operational on the front, the air crew determined that uh, something had to be done so that this slow, unmaneuverable, vulnerable aircraft uh, was lacking in the area of self-defense. So, what the ground crews did was they took the storage compartment behind the pilot emptied it out of all the survival equipment and other things that would uh, be in there added a basket down in this area for an extra man to sit in carved out a, par a portion of the fuselage and bolted on a 7.62 millimeter Chicasse machine gun mounted on I want to say that's a gimbal mount, but I know that's not the right turn. Uh, basically, it's not completely freewheeling. It only has it has a uh, field of fire that does not angle down. It only goes up and to the sides. And that was judged enough to at least uh, put a deterrent on the back end of the airplane. Otherwise, a, a German fighter could just park right behind one of these things at near stall speed and unload into it until it hits something vital. Now, the IL-2 Sturmovic carries a large variety of weapons. There is nothing above the nose because that is all engine right here, engine and armor. The engine of the Sturmovic was uh, notoriously difficult to uh, shoot out. Uh, German aces said that uh, really the only way to reliably damage the engine on one of these things and take it down was to hit it in the oil pan which would cause all the, en the hot engine oil to flood out through the bullet holes, and then the engine would seize up once it overheated and ran out of lubricant. So all of the weapons on the IL-2 mod are stored internally underneath the fuselage or on the wings. It has a pair of 23mm cannons mounted outboard, and a pair of 7.62mm machine guns mounted right above the wing's leading edge there. It carries four 50 kilogram fab bombs in an internal bomb bay, and it carries four RS-82 rockets underneath each wing. As it is a premium, there is no improvements to be gained. You can only modify the aircraft by changing what pieces of equipment you want to uh, mount on it. In my case, I've uh, mounted improved covering, armor plating to protect my engine and my crewman, and improved reflector sight because it has all of its guns are mounted on the wings and I want to have a good amount of focused fire on the front, both for use in anti-air combat and to get more damage in on ground targets uh, when I'm doing strafing runs because the cannons on this thing are not as powerful as those on the IL-2 Tier 5 attacker once it is fully upgraded. Now, the IL-2 mod, before the, uh, the German attackers showed up, this aircraft and the IL-10 at Tier 7 were the choice aircraft to hop into if you wanted to fly an attack aircraft and specifically go out and hunt down other attackers. The IL-2 mod, in addition to having its own self-defense, its light fighters uh, coming up and parking on your tail, also is more maneuverable than 
its Tech Tree counterpart in Tier 5, the IL-2. So you can outmaneuver and uh, do pretty well in a dogfight against uh, other IL-2s in this thing. Going up against uh, Henschel's and uh, Stukas, you're going to have issues, but then again, those aircraft are designed, uh, at least in this game, for the purpose of hunting your aircraft down before they go on with their primary mission of eliminating ground targets. Uh, the IL-2 mod is an aircraft I've had a lot of fun with. As you can see, it does have a, uh, an experienced crew there. Uh, that is the crew that this aircraft uh, started off with when I got it, when the game released. Uh, I have since then uh, retrained them for the IL-2T at Tier 6, but I always use them uh, when I'm flying this beast right here. And a monster she is. I don't take her out too often these days because the German attacker's been brought into the game and they uh, appeal to my playstyle far more than the Russians do, but it's a fun thing to hop into every now and then for me, especially if uh, I'm going after ground target missions uh, as a priority for either daily completions for tickets or as part of a greater overall mission like the uh, War Cash uh, event that just ended here. In combat, the IL-2 mod should be used primarily to eliminate ground targets. That is your primary goal here. If you're given an opportunity to take out an enemy attack aircraft, be it a bot or a human, by all means go for it. Especially if it's a German. If a German gives you uh, a good shot on him, give him as good of a pounding as you can, because if it's a human and he knows what he's doing, you probably aren't going to get a second chance at it. Uh, against fighters, you want to stay as low as possible in this thing. Try to get them to overshoot you and then lay into them with the cannons uh, once they pass by. Same thing for heavy fighters. Less experienced pilots have come up directly from behind you, and by cutting out your throttle and using your flaps, you can force them to overshoot, or, or else they'll stall. And once they pass in front of you, give them the whole nine yards. Same thing goes for heavies. Now, the more experienced pilots will come at you from oblique angles from the sides, uh, both eliminate, uh, minimizing the amount of t uh, gun time that your tail gunner has and also making it absolutely impossible for you to turn around and get your forward guns on them. Your best shot at uh, taking out a veteran in these circumstances is to get extremely low and time a bomb drop for just as they pass over and behind you. Uh, timing on that is extremely important, especially with how fuses on bombs have been manipulated over the patches. And honestly, unless if your timing is exactly spot on, it won't work. Other defenses you can use in this thing when you're under attack is to circle uh, ground obstacles like arches or pillars as closely as you can. This will both keep uh, human pilots from having large amounts of gun time on you, and as an added benefit, this tactic tends to cause the uh, AI uh, opponents uh, to either crash into the ground object or disengage entirely. Now there's a great example of how to use this aircraft in all roles that was sent in to me by a viewer. This contribution is from Porkins Jr. of Eagle Squadron, and I enjoyed watching this battle immensely. I hope you do as well. Good hunting. Okay, here we are. Tally-ho, Porkins. Now note he's already put the uh, aircraft into a shallow dive. This is effective at increasing airspeed without having to use your engine boost. It's also a good move to use when you're in a uh, Russian attack aircraft on a map like Pacific because you start out at a much higher altitude than you really need to be at. So go ahead and convert all that potential energy into actual energy. He takes a little pass here from the enemy IL-2 mod getting aggressive. It then proceeds on to go hit ground targets. Porkins lines himself up here on this American destroyer. 
He doesn't give it any gunfire here, and he drops two bombs on it. That's a mistake, in my opinion. His bomb drop wasn't spot on. And if he hit the, the ship with his guns and then one bomb, that would have popped it. He does not repeat the error on the second destroyer there and annihilates it as proper. Some gunfire, one bomb, leaving him with, uh... Well, no, looks like he dropped two bombs on that one. So, yeah. He's now carrying no bombs and a full wings of rockets. So, there goes a rocket, and that's one X-Destroyer. Now, he's got a pretty good bit of uh, ground targets taken out here. He is ahead of the enemy IL-2 mod at this point. The enemy IL-2 mod hasn't taken out hardly any targets. Uh, most of his points that he has there are a result of uh, an aircraft that he shot down. Also, Porkins' team is in the process of letting him down right now. Look at that. Nothing but nothing but red in the lower light. So, Porkins goes about doing what uh, an IL-2 does best at this point, and that's just uh, rack up a lot of ground kills so that you can get money on a loss. And there is a bunch of red dots heading in his direction right now. Is this guy gonna go? Yeah, there goes that destroyer. And now company shows up. It's the new Blikarpov I-183 doing some uh, tail shooting and staying within range of Porkins' tail gunner the entire time. Oh yeah, IL-2 pilots love that when you do circles and fly behind them. Now Porkins is going for some defensive flying. He's going to go around the arch here. Yeah, the I-183 does not follow him through to the uh, to that enemy pilot's credit, but he still stays right behind him. And there has taken a damaged wing as a result of tail gunner fire, and he's going to keep going. He really wants to take out Porkins, and now the enemy pilot has friends. Those are some unfriendly skies that Porkins is flying in now, but he remains dedicated to continuing to fly around this stone arch, and there it pays off. He finally killed the I-183 with his tail gunner. And now there's an XF-4 F-3 turning in opposition circles to him. That's a player. However, the maneuvers that Porkins are just doing around this uh, stone arch is keeping him from doing much there. And that player just crashed. And because Porkins is tail gunner, got the last hit on him, he got the credit for it. Way to go, Porkins. Now there's a 109B coming up behind him. The 109B is uh, taking some critical damage now from continued fire from that tail gunner. And good night, Wing Chop Fu. Well done, Porkins. This P-43 is coming in now, and looks like it really wants some. Give him a kiss on the lips there, Porkins. Oh, not that time? Okay. Maybe later. Porkins remains dedicated to flying around the stone arch, minimizing the amount of gun time that that P-43 can have on him, because the P-43 Lancer's guns can really lay the hurt on an IL-2. And here we go. P-43 just won the beauty pageant. Give him a kiss. Good night, Gracie. Good shot, Porkins. Rocket kill for the Rocketeer Medal and Destroyer achievement. Very well done. Now, Porkins has a solid, solid lead in the superiority meter. He doesn't need to uh, expose himself to any further danger, but he's going to go off and uh, intercept that uh, LBSH and possibly the IL-2 mod. Whichever one of them makes a target of itself first is going to go down. 
that will reset the red counter and give Porkins a decided advantage in closing out this fight. And it looks like the LVSH has just volunteered to be meat. Use the force, Porkins. Good shot, kid. That was one in a million. And that is how the battle closes. Porkins has uh, secured a wonderful supremacy lead and now disengages from the other IL-2 mod wisely because he is at low health. Good fight, Porkins. An excellent demonstration of what the IL-2 mod can do.